Hi there, thanks for joining me for another episode of Draw, Make, and Code. I'm your host, Ed Cavett, and in this episode, we're going to be making a recursive pine tree, P5JS. In order to make things easier to describe, I thought I'd put up this slide. Maybe it would help you visualize what's happening as we move through this code. So we're just doing a basic recursion that's drawing a blade of grass or a trunk. So this is our maximum length, goes into this first segment, and then each subsequent segment gets reduced until we get to the end, that's our minimum length. So each of these segments, we can just take one of those out there, and uh, regardless of its length, it's going to be represented in this value here. We're going to run from a, a run loop from zero to the length, and then each point along the way of this trunk segment, we're going to decide whether or not to grow a branch going left or growing going right or maybe in both directions so if uh, we determine to grow a branch we're gonna do another loop that runs from zero and it's going to go to the length of that branch and then each step along the way there we're going to decide to grow a cluster of pine needles and those needles, if they're on a leftward pointing branch, are going to be pointing away from the trunk this way. And if they're on a rightward pointing branch, they're going to be pointing away from the trunk that way. So we have to adjust the rotation accordingly. Here's the program that we're going to make. It creates this output here. So if you type it in just as I'm going to present it to you, it will create this output. And then you can make whatever adjustments you want. So in the global space, we're going to need two variables. We're going to declare one for our minimum length and one for our maximum length. And this kind of is the, the benchmark that the recursion will refer back to so it knows what it needs to size things. Uh, if you had those values in the recursion, they would end up changing. Uh, so we want some values outside of the recursion that are constant, relatively constant, and then we can use those to make whatever references we need. In setup, we're going to use the available window width and window height. This tree will scale up to whatever canvas size. Uh, you may have to adjust a stroke weight here or there, but by and large, it's pretty scalable. Then inside setup, we're going to assign a maximum length, which is going to be a fraction of our height. So this tree scale is always relative to the height of the canvas. And then the minimum length is just going to be a fraction of the maximum length. We're going to clear the background so that we have something that our tree will show up against. And then in draw, we're going to translate to the center of the canvas and to the bottom of it, and then draw our tree upward. You'll notice here that this tree has kind of a trunk here, and it looks like it's got something branching off here. That's because this is a composite of three calls to the pine tree maker function. So we're going to create a loop. We're going to run that three times, and each time we're going to call that pine maker, uh, pine tree maker function and we're going to change the maximum length slightly so that we get different variations and we're going to composite those all onto one so it makes a nice full bushy tree then we're just going to end the draw by with no loop if you let this run it gets kind of bogged down and then it could take it a while to recover so i just put that no loop in there shuts it off and then i can examine the output and do whatever i need to do so here's part of our function to start. Uh, it's called pine tree maker, not very imaginative there. And we're going to send into it, uh, it a value. So it's going to be received by this length. And if I scroll down, you can see where we send, we call pine maker inside this function, and then we send the length value into it again, but we make an adjustment. And this is what makes things smaller as it goes along. So we're going to make some changes to the graphic state. So we want to isolate those inside push and pop. So every time we call the recursion, we can start at the same spot or our intended spot. Then we're going to translate to the origin, 0, 0. And that way, whatever rotations we make will be around the base of that segment. Then we're going to rotate slightly so that trunk segment isn't perfectly straight up and down. It has a little bit of bend to it. And then we're going to interpolate a stroke weight based on the minimum length and the maximum length. So we're going to look at the length that's being passed into the parameter. We're going to find out where it is relative to these two values. And then we're going to assign a stroke weight based on that. You can play around with this and get what you want based on your canvas. And since I'm drawing more branches than trunk, I thought it would be easier to use a stroke weight that's based on the 
branch, the ideal branch thickness, and then make an adjustment to that value for the trunk because the trunk needs to be a little bit meatier than the branches. So I just take that stroke weight value that's intended for the branches and I multiply it times one and a fraction and that makes it a little bit bigger. And you can play around with that to get what you want. Then I'm going to use a stroke that contrasts that shows up well against the needles in the background. And then I'm going to draw a line from the origin upward. So this y value here has a negative length and uh, this value here is positive. It's always a positive value. And then we're just going to use a negative operator in front of it, puts it into the negative realm. Then once we have our trunk segment, we're going to isolate the graphic changes again inside push and pop. And then inside that, we're going to have a loop. And that loop's going to run from the bottom of that segment to the top of the segment. And each step along the way, it's going to make a determination to draw a limb. So we're going to run from zero to length. Now this is a positive value and it's incrementing one unit per cycle. And then because we need to make it go up into the negative space, we'll just add a negative operator in front of that Y and that will do that function for us. So we need to uh, assign, declare and assign a variable called dense. And that's going to say how many clusters, how many needles are in a cluster. So there could be five to 10. You can play around with that if you want. And then because the branches are going to be slightly different in size from the segment. So if our segment is this long, I want the branch to be within the range of that segment size. So our segments are getting smaller as they go up. The branches are getting smaller as they go up until it gets into kind of a point. And that's what this is going to do. And it's random. So some branches are going to be really short and some are going to be extra long. So it could be half the size or as much as one and a tenth. Then we're going to test by a coin flip whether or not it's possible to put a branch here. So this is a left branch condition. I have a, a condition that does the right branch. I could have optimized this in some way, but I just, this seemed like it was easier for me to understand and probably easier to teach or to do in a tutorial. So that's why I did it this way. So this is the left branch and it has a coin flip chance of whether or not it has the possibility of existing. And then there's a 30% chance that it will exist. So I'm testing to see coin flip left branch. Yes, no. And if yes, what's the chance that it will be here? And if it meets that threshold, then we're going to do the condition or we're going to do the loop that draws from the origin of where the trunk is to the end of the branch. The reason why I did this is because it gives us the possibility of having both a left and right branch at the same time. And uh, it creates this, these gaps here. So that it's not real dense, like there isn't limbs every single way or they aren't alternating like a fern. So it creates that kind of organics. So that's the reason why that's the theory I had behind this. And then inside that condition, if it's met, we're doing our loop that runs from zero to the length modifier. And that's that value that tells us the length of that branch. And we're going to increment by one unit per cycle. Then we have to make this, this branch wavy. We don't want it straight across. See, it's got some wave to it. To do that, we're just going to interpolate some noise, 2D noise. We're going to use the Y and X position, uh, X variables for those parameters and you can add a zero here so like 0 0.01 would slow down the waviness and right here it's pretty wavy so play around with that to see what you like and the height of that waviness is just a fraction of the length of the branch so the waviness is always in proportion to the length so we're going to get dramatic waviness down here and moderate to real subtle waviness up here once we have that, we can determine our stroke weight. So I want the branch to be thick near the trunk and get thin near the end. So you can do this calculation where it takes the stroke weight and it multiplies it times uh, the difference of the length and where it's at in the branch. So uh, if the length is 10 and we're right here, we're not subtracting anything from it. So our stroke weight would be 10. And then as we move away, our X position is like five. So now we're subtracting five from the total length of 10. Now our stroke weight's five. Do you see how that works as it gets smaller as it goes out? And that's what's happening here. 
and then you can multiply all that times a fraction to bring that stroke weight down into a realm of realism because if you just do this straight calculation your stroke weight might be a little bit bigger than you want so just uh, take it down a fraction and it will modify it to the size you need then you're going to make your trunk color a contrast against the needles or I mean the branch color a contrast against the needles and then just drop that down there and because we're moving from the center to the left we're going to put a negative X and then we're moving up so it'd be a negative Y and then we're just adding in that modifier for the waviness to the branch so the next part is a condition that tests whether or not there are needles along the way on this branch so we're moving to make the branch we're dropping a point moving to the next point dropping it each step along the way we're going to say hey are there needles here and if there are let's do that so that's what this is it's a 10 percent chance so each branch has about 10 percent coverage of needles and inside that condition if it's true we're just going to do a loop that runs through the density of that cluster of needles we're going to isolate uh, any changes to the graphic state and we're going to translate to that position on the branch so now that's our origin and we can rotate around that origin to put our needles on there and then we're going to constrain the rotation so that the needles are pointed fan like in a general direction and that's what this does here it's a sloppy <laughs> a sloppy setting for this you can optimize it I'm sure but that's just how I hammered it into place and then uh, the, the needles have the same thickness wherever they're at so a needle here is going to be the same thickness as a needle here so we're just going to use a a general stroke weight for that then use a stroke color that contrasts against the background and your trunk and limbs and then here I I make a shadow and then I make a highlight so the shadow is offset on the Y just slightly so it goes down so the shadow is at the bottom and then the highlight is going to be above it and that's what these two lines are for now to make a right right pointing branch we're going to do the same thing again here's that same set of procedures again except we're, we're making a few changes we're still moving from uh, 0 to the positive length modifier except for down here we're going to take that minus away so now we're moving from the center to the right and we have to do that not only for our branch but we have to do it for our uh, our pine needles so we're going to do the same thing here take out that X operator or that negative operator on our X and then our needles for our rightward pointing branch have to be pointed away from the trunk so we're just going to alter that formula there inside the rotate and it's going to point them in the right direction you can play around with those and uh, optimize it get the feel for it however you like it then the same thing again we're going to create our shadow drop it down a little bit and then create our highlight so that's pretty much it for making the branches, making the needles, making the trunk. Now we're going to uh, end our pop for all of that and we're going to translate to the end of the segment. So zero, 00 was here and now we're going to translate to the next piece of the segment and we're going to do a test to see do we have enough length to make another recursion and if we do we're going to call that pine tree maker function again and we're going to send into it the length that's in here except for we're going to reduce it by 20 percent so we're just going to take 80 percent of that and send it back into itself if uh, it's too short we're just going to fall out of this recursion and that's the end of our pine tree okay if you've typed in everything correctly then this is the output you should have well not this exact output but you should have trees that are being produced of varying sizes and shapes before I go I wanted to share a couple things that you can do with this that I didn't do in the code because it would have taken longer and you guys can figure this out right so here we have a leftward pointing branch and a rightward pointing branch and those are pretty much the two states for putting branches on a trunk but in this version I have a central branch and it breaks up the trunk and gives the impression that there's a branch pointing toward the viewer and that makes it a little bit fuller even still and then you can do things like change the minimum length ratio so you can make it like minimum length is equal to the maximum length times 0 0.7 and that'll create a, a hedge with like a rounded top 
I think that's it for this video. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've got the most out of it and you'll be inspired and code your heart out. Uh, hit the thumbs up. That helps get this shared. Drop a comment. Say hi. That helps get it, get it shared so more people can see that this exists. And then realize, hey, I can learn how to make a recursive pine tree. So that would be great. Until next time, as always, thanks for joining me and take care.